It's time for our first guest. Please welcome to the show ESPN analyst, Malcolm Huckabee! Yeah. Malcolm, welcome. You were a star at Boston College. In fact, you were one of the last players. You actually took BC into the tournament to the Elite Eight. How about that, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there is one thing I must mention, and that is this. You are from Bristol. Yep. And we all know here in New England that uh, it's great if you can play for UConn or BC. So I would like to ask you now, since you are from Connecticut, why did you decide to come to BC? Well, that's a tough question. I tell you what, there was a lot of debate in my family. <laughs> uh, and it was tough because I was one of the first players of the year out of Connecticut not to go to UConn. Um, I'd love to tell you I picked BC because I was getting a great education. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was in a Big East conference. Mm -hmm. And UConn had another really great guard from Connecticut, a uh, kid by the name of Chris Smith, All-American guard. He was a sophomore there. And I looked and I'm saying, well... If I go there, I might be sitting on the bench for my first two years, and mm -hmm. BC was losing a guy by the name of Dana Barrows who had a great NBA career, and I'm like, you know what, I go to BC, I'm playing right away, it's close enough to home, and that's really the real reason why I wound up going to BC as opposed to UConn. And this is the reason why uh, uh, athletes sometimes choose the school because they want more playing time, so that's obviously why you did that. But now, you got out of college, and you played pro ball, you were in Europe, Eventually, you ended up on the Miami Heat. It was a dream job. But before you came back, something happened in Europe, and, and I was reading about this. You got a staff infection in your foot. Yep. Uh, you downplayed it, but some of the things I read, uh, you almost had your foot amputated. You ever see the Nutty Professor? Yes. You know Mr. Klump when he turned into Professor Klump? Yeah. Well, I won't show the audience my ankle because they would get sick. I don't want people doing that. But uh, long story short, I never was injured a day before in my life in uh, Never missed a practice at Boston College, and I'm playing in Italy, went to plant takeoff, and my whole lower leg exploded. And, um, you know, literally my, my sneaker untied itself, and I'm speaking through Beppe, my translator. So when you go play overseas, you typically have a translator until you pick up the, the language. So Beppe's like, Malcolm, tutto bene, tutto bene, you know, good, good. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, they treated it as a high ankle sprain, when in reality it was a triple fracture. And... My ankle had stretched out the skin so much where they put this green stuff on my foot. And uh, without grossing, I see some looks over there. <laughs> it, if you saw my ankle, you'd be like, oh, my goodness, keep that thing back on. And long story short, I developed a staph infection. I was over there for about a month, and the doctors were like, hey, you know what? You know, we might have to cut, cut your foot off. And uh, God only knows how I saved my foot. But uh, he looked out for me, and I was able to uh, rehab back. And as you talked about, I came back and was able to fulfill my dream going and playing for Pat Riley in the Miami Heat. Yes, congratulations. Uh, now, we met because uh, you are an ESPN analyst, and I am a uh, microphone cable guy. That's... <laughs> I was shocked. I'll tell you what. I, I got I to tell this story. I mean, Steve tells me, hey, Malcolm, I got this show. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking that right now. He's down in his parents' basement somewhere. I don't, I, don't know, I, I don't know about this guy right here. He's a guy that does, like, all our sound checks and makes sure that we don't have stuff on our tie when we go on TV and does a really good job and all this technical stuff. And I said, oh, okay, I'll check it out. But, uh, yeah, so he, he does a great job for ESPN, but I can't believe And you do a great job on this show, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I do appreciate that. Now, we had just worked together recently in Springfield where they brought the best high school basketball players together. And I was kind of shocked because there was a player that came. I believe his name is Okafor. Yep. Uh, Jalil Okafor. And, now he's and, going to Duke next year. Yeah, and you talked to him. And the first thing you said to him when he sat down was, I want you to think about this. And he looked at you and he smiled. And you said, when the NBA is over for you, what career path are you going to take? You don't know what's going to happen. You could have an injury. I want you to think about that. And he was a little bit shocked, and he said, yeah. He goes, I'm thinking about that. But you had so much insight there. And, uh, and we had talked about this later because you said uh, there was that moment when Pat Riley said that he had to cut you, and it was the worst moment for you. And here you are giving the kids the insight to know that that moment's going to come. Yeah, part of me died. I mean, uh, sitting in Pat Riley's office on a couch similar to this one that you guys are sitting on right here. And you know, Pat Riley, the Hall of Fame coach, and 
you know, here I had worked my whole life to get to the NBA, and boom, it was gone like that. Mm -hmm. And it was like dying. And uh, I'll never forget, there was a guy by the name of Beasley Reese that spoke at my high school press conference. I had a high school press conference. I was a highly recruited kid coming out of uh, Bristol, and everybody was trying to figure out, is he going to UConn? Is he going to Georgetown? Is he going to Syracuse? And um, Beasley Reese pulled me to the side. He was a family friend. He played in the NFL for years, and he told me, he said, listen, Boston College is going to wake you up at 6 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, which they did. They're going to run you for two and three hours in the morning. They're going to come back in the afternoon and run you for two or three hours. He's like, but well, you got to make sure that you get something from Boston College. Mm -hmm. And you come out of there armed with skills to be able to go on afterwards and be successful. And that's why I try to talk to some of these young players. And you happen to hear me talk <laughs> to them because you're doing my sound Because I'm nosy. Yeah. And, and, you know, and he's kind of, you know, most of these kids are taken aback because they're so young. They're like I was where they're thinking, hey, man. I'm 18, 19 years old. I'm going to play in the NBA until I'm like 40 years old and mm -hmm. figure it out. And I know because I went through it personally where it could be taken away from you like that. Mm -hmm. You better have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. You better start figuring it out. And so many guys come at these kids differently. They come in, like, hey, man, you got to work on your jump shot. You gotta, well, the teams are going to do that. That's the easy part. The part that people don't talk to these kids about, and I think it's a shame because a lot of colleges don't do it, they do a poor job of preparing these guys for life afterwards. Forget about going to class. I don't think any kids should be even going to class. I think they should be interning mm -hmm. during the off season where they're eight, made to um, wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, work to five, and figure out what it's like to work in a real job setting, mm -hmm. as opposed to going to some class where, look, let's face it, a lot of these colleges are just doing what they need to do to keep these kids eligible through the course of the year. Yeah. So it's tough, but I always try to tell that to these kids, and most of them, like Okafor, is like, oh, okay, I thought he was going to talk to me about something else. Yeah, like, about, nah, about ball. Yes. No, you were talking about. Uh, your career. Uh, you also uh, were gone for a long time. When you ended your basketball career, you were gone for like 12 years or so, but you came back and you're doing the ESPN analyst stuff. Why did you come back? How did you come back? I'm happy that you're back, but tell that story. Well, Bristol, uh, the home of ESPN, probably the only thing you know about ESPN. Um, I grew up on Emmett Street, which is, I literally can see ESPN from my little two bedroom apartment mm -hmm. in Bristol. And uh, long story short, my mom, and my wife were like, listen, you know, we know you love ball. You know, mom thinks oh, you're handsome. You got a great voice, this and that. You know basketball. You should think about doing broadcasting. And she'd see all these guys at the gas station right around the corner from her house. So mm -hmm. I'd love to tell you I had this great plan that I was going to be this ESPN analyst doing <laughs> at national games. But really, it was just a call from my mom saying, hey, all right, it's time for you to start going mm -hmm. down and trying to figure out how you can get into ESPN. And the great thing about it is I, I read an article where you're actually – very happy to do this. You, you had the dream and you made it into the NBA. It didn't work out for you at that point, but you're now back in basketball working and being around the high school and the college kids, and you do love it. And that's one of the themes of the show here is that in your life, you can begin again. Yes, you're not playing right now, but you're a part of basketball, and uh, we appreciate watching you on ESPN with the analyst stuff. Right, everybody? Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, before we go, you uh, have a great love for the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, you are on the board of directors. I yes. believe it's in Connecticut. Yes. Uh, why don't you give it a little plug there, because I know how much you feel about them. Well, well they just built a new club, Bristol Boys and Girls Club, a place where I learned how to swim uh, and uh, where I learned how to play basketball and do a lot of different things, go to camps. It was the first time I actually went away to a summer camp uh, through the Bristol Boys and Girls Club. So, uh, yeah, get out and support it. Uh, you can go online, Bristol Boys Club. Um, you know, you can, can find some of the stuff that they're doing, web, donate, obviously money is always needed to help folks, but uh, the Boys and Girls Club was great to me and my family, and it provided a lot of opportunities for me and my brothers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. Great story. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so happy he came here tonight, Malcolm Huckabee. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll be right back right after this.